What's up everyone? Hope you guys are doing good. Welcome back to another video. Today is going to be a little bit more of a serious one. It's going to be a story time about how I lost my best friend. Before I get more into details, you guys are probably wondering why would I post this? I'm just doing this for views. I promise it's not at all like that. The point of this video is that there's a bigger picture behind the story that I'm going to tell in a bit. Kids at my age take things for granted. We are so sucked into social media, so into our phones. We don't enjoy the little things around us. So it's more of the bigger picture, but without further ado, grab some popcorn and just hear me out. Sorry, I do look super tired because it is, it is, I have military time, but it's 1025 right now. So everybody's sleeping, talk about the choir, and I'm super tired. I just got done from an event, but let's jump straight into it. So it started back in maybe two years ago. 2022 can't remember the exact date around may where i've always wanted to own my own business and at the time the business that was booming were dog kennels i was very hesitant about even jumping into this type of business but i've always wanted to own my own things so i just went for it i remember going on instagram and i was scrolling through a bunch of different kennels and i found the perfect looking dog now looking back at everything it's kind of crazy because like everything fell into place like i remember showing up at the bank one minute late and somehow like everything worked out we ended up taking him home before people say like bro it's just a dog just hear me out just hear me out and those who know that are attached to their animals they know these are not just animals these are not just pets these are families I took him home i fell in love with him and that's when i started up the whole instagram and that's actually when i made my first social media for even where my accounts now, I switched it over from my kennel page to my personal, but that's when I started everything. When I, the day I took him home, I started up the kennel page. I started making content with him. I started posting him. We even, the day we took him home, we went to, went to the park and took pictures with him. Just to talk about the dog itself, like he was such a baby to us. He was super like, super mellow, super attached to us. Um, and he never barked and like that's what he, it was something so unique about him that had us so attached to him as he kept getting older so he was like a, such a baby to us like it was even at one point where i was like i don't even know if i want to do this dog kennel stuff or if i just want him as a pet but time went on um i kept doing the marketing for him we even got like i did it properly i got him like some vitamins to help him um start breeding eventually we came across to the point where we were like, okay, maybe I should invest in getting my own female where I can now um, breed them together and make what I was looking to make. She's kind of dirty right now, but she, we have, we got this little thing. To focus on our boy Bruno, um, we got him a little friend and they were supposed to breed together. We tried it once, didn't work out. After that, we realized, I realized like it was too much money for me to put into. And I was just attached with these dogs. Um, we always had an attachment more towards our boy dog, Bruno. The one I just showed you guys right now is Cookie. We always had more attachment of our boy, Bruno. So, um, you know, we always spoiled him. He was always getting toys. And I know we shouldn't do this, but you parents know you're guilty of this too. You always have a favorite kid. But yeah, we favored our boy, Bruno. So he was like really super attached to us. He was one of the best dogs I think I've ever had. Um, I've never seen another dog act the way he did. Chill. Okay, okay, Bruno. Go. Okay, go. Sit down. Sit down. He was in love with toys, he was in love with balls, he never barked, had beautiful green human-like eyes. And at the end of the day, he was the reason why I even got interested in doing social media and doing content. So I remember, it was a fast forward, they're about one and a half, we're kind of living on our own, on our own apartment. He's still as spoiled as he can be, he's always sleeping on the couch. And Cookie was always locked up, cause she was always getting in trouble. But Bruno, we always call him sleeping on the couch. And no matter how much he peed anywhere, we would still let him out. That's how much we, favored Bruno. The minute Cookie peed somewhere, she's getting locked up. Bruno, he could throw up, pee anywhere. I don't know, something was special about this dog. Fortunately, we left our apartment. I went back with my parents and I started taking care of these two dogs on my own. I was doing social media now at the time, uh, way more often than when I was. I was still in my full-time job and I was in school. So I really didn't pay attention to these dogs as much as I should, but I always took care of them. They had a big kennel. Um, where they can walk around in. They always had food every morning and water as well. 
time moved forward and I remember the day was, um, again, my girlfriend at the time had came with me to my parents' house and remember her like noticing that Bruno had changed. I didn't believe it, but he had this black collar that he always had on and she was able to slip it right off his neck and that's when we kind of like all stood there in shock like he's definitely got something wrong with him. I was kind of thinking maybe it was my fault. I wasn't paying attention to him. I was always trying to remember like I, I did feed him, right? Like um, maybe they were fighting. Maybe he wasn't eating. The other dog was eating it. This is when things started going downhill. Maybe the next day, the day of, we came home and there was, he always had, he has his bed. He had his bed and there was we came home and there was poop like all over his bed but it was super weird because it didn't smell and it looked very like tarry very dark and just splattered everywhere and he was even more scrawnier we would take him outside and he, he no matter what was wrong with him if you throw a ball he would always chase it we would go out there would get his ball and he'd like he was playing with it and then he would just kind of like stop it really could tell like he was slowing down but we still didn't know what was wrong and i was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt sometimes dogs like they'll act like they're sick next day late next day they're perfectly fine so i was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt um and just as time went on he was kind of getting worse there was a time where i was like okay he's getting better but he just um progressively got worse i knew it was kind of time to take him to the vet i was kind of hesitant but and this dog has never caused us problems. He's never been sick. The one I just showed you, Cookie, she has been to the vet many times. She's always sick. Bruno was never sick. So this was the first time we took him to the vet. At this point, he's not eating anymore. He's just drinking water. He's really scrawny now. He's just like, he just looks sick. And you can tell he's, something's going on with him. So we take him to the vet. They do a parvo test, thankfully, well, not thankfully, I kind of wish it was at this point, but he didn't have parvo. They want to do more testing and we left him there. We left not thinking that this was going to be the last time like we were going to see him. I remember just sitting on the couch. They called me. They're like, hey, he's ready to go. You'll be good in like five minutes. You guys want or you'll be good in like 30 minutes. You guys want to come down um, and pick him up. And I was like, OK, not bad. And then like one minute after I got that call, I get another call, same vet. And they're like, you guys need to come right now. And I'm like, well, why is there such a change in tone? Why is there such a demand for me to go right now? We get to the vet. The vet knows, the vet knew that he, he had cancer. They did everything they could. They gave him IVs, um, they gave him, I, I don't even remember what they gave him. I can't, I wasn't even worried about that. When I heard that he had cancer, I just didn't believe it. She showed me the x-rays, she showed me the tumor. I just, there was no way that it was possible. The dog that meant everything to us was so sick and we couldn't do anything for him. I even bought medicine for him. I even stopped by PetSmart right before taking him home and I even got him like patties, I got him food, I got him toys. And we got to my house and he was like collapsing, he couldn't walk. He, and at this point he was just like super skinny, super sick. It was so unreal, it, it was hard to take in for us to see, you know, our dog that just that we were loving two weeks ago that um, we just took to the park running around the grass rolling around and for him to go like that like nothing the talk at the last vet was putting him down she offered to put him down with no charge because he was suffering he was really sick he hasn't ate in weeks um, or days and he was only getting worse he was in a lot of pain i remember giving him the ball and him looking up and just like like shout for help just so sad but like he knew it was his time to go so we ended up making that decision we spent some time you know i'm so thankful that we didn't do it spot on like we were able to take him home just take some time us two and him and like really understand like what we're about to do and you know if this is the right decision he was you know i truly believe if we didn't take him that night that he would have passed here and that was my fear i didn't want him to pass where he was um, struggling, or it was very rough for him to go. We took him to the vet and you know, everything happened. And it was just like huge mental restart. It was a huge reality check. Like, you know, I, I get 
People aren't attached to their dogs like this, but I truly felt this dog was something special. He was not like another dog. He was such a baby to us. He was like our kid. We always spoiled him. He was always put first. Um, there was just something so special about him. He had these human-like eyes. The next day, it's kind of like reality check. Like, you know, this is it. Like, we wake up and he's not there. We we always had him in our bed. He, we'd always wake up and we're, I was always asking for him. I'd always wake up and I was always making sure he was by my side. The reason I want to share this story with you guys is because people of my age, especially the younger generation, were so sucked into our phones. We don't enjoy the people around us or the things around us, the little things, until they're gone. That's what I realized. Like, it's something so hard and it happened the hard way, but I had that experience and I want to share it with you guys because we all need to take a step back from everything that we do take a step back from your phone and if you see your mom or parents you you know spoil your dog even he got a little goldfish in a bowl clean his bowl because it's the little things in life that we're all taking for granted once they're gone we want those things back you know i wish i enjoyed him more just remember him as the dog he was so enjoy the little things in life time flies and not everything is here forever again i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i will see you in the next one